Welcome back to Guerrilla Radio, recorded January 29th, 2022. Well, the Victoria Film Festival is back, running from February 4th through the 13th with a hybrid model of in-person and online screenings. One of this year's offerings is Jeremiah Hayes' Montreal International Documentary Festival's People's Choice Award-winning Dear Audrey. It is an at-once ethereal reflection on the enduring power of love and unblinking revelation of life's sometimes steel-cold reality. That's the way I saw it. Welcome to the program, Jeremiah. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my great pleasure. Of course, now, Jeremiah, I watched your film a couple of days ago, and it's really sticking with me, reverberating, you know, in the way that good films do. And it's what really struck me is it's such an intimate portrayal of the lives of Martin and Audrey and Jacqueline Duckworth, while it seeming unobtrusive as well. Can you can we start with like, how, how did Dear Audrey come about? Why, why did you shoot this film? Well, I've known Martin since 91, when I got my first job at the film board, out of film school. We were friends ever since, but about five years ago, I just thought it would be nice to make a film about him and his life. And this was a year or two after Audrey's diagnosis with Alzheimer's. So um, I saw how lovingly he was caring for Audrey, and um, I just knew them as amazing people. So I asked if I could make a film about him and his life. And at first he said no. <laughs> uh, he said that, uh, oh, I, I forget exactly how he put it, but it was something like, oh, I have nothing really important to say. And I understand where he's coming from because I, I kind of wouldn't want someone to be making a film about me. <laughs> but um, I persisted and I asked, well, could I just film you playing the piano from Audrey because I heard that he plays the piano for her to help her sleep. And he said yes. And so that was the first thing I shot in 2016. Mm -hmm. And he never said no after that. It was sort of an open door policy, which is who Martin and Audrey are to everyone. <laughs> they're, they're the house on the block that has their door open to everyone. Can, maybe you can describe to Canadians who may not know, especially younger Canadians, who, who Martin is and, and, and why he's uh, renowned. Yeah, he is a very prolific documentary filmmaker, very well known in Montreal, and I assume in the rest of Canada. He's made 30 films as a director, and he's shot as a cameraman 100. He's known in Montreal and everyone who knows him as a great guy. One film critic called him the gentle giant. <laughs> and Audrey's the same. On top of that, they're both very politically active. They were very active in the anti-Vietnam War movement and then after that, the anti-nuke movement of the 80s. So their hearts are always in the right place. Well, the film is divided too between this super personal journey that and difficult journey that Martin's going through as his wife is beginning to get uh, the uh, more extreme effects of Alzheimer's and as you as you describe you you go back and forth between Martin's life and his life as a filmmaker and as a politically uh, and socially conscious filmmaker at that so it's giving us a, a, a bit of a historical tour of um, our own recent history yeah Early on, I didn't know all the sort of, I could say, epic adventures he and Audrey went through. But as I was filming, he started telling me these stories and I thought, wow, he's, got, he's led such an amazing life and such a life that was always true to his beliefs. And he never wavered from that for, let's say, to make money or whatever. He was always very true to his causes. And I thought that to interweave we call the backstory and his present day life, I wanted to find a great way to one to play off the other. So the backstory is quite large and epic and international. He's traveling all over the world from Vietnam to Mexico. So I wanted that epic life to be always in juxtaposition with his more tender, intimate world, caring for Audrey. And there's an element to it. I mean, it's the when you when you are filming uh, the domestic life of uh, Martin and Audrey and and Jacqueline, and we could talk about it in a second yeah. too. I mean, it, it's um, 
it's so personal and so intimate and such a, a they're going through such a, a difficult time something that i think there's a reflex to look away from topics as serious and as uh, unremitting as as alzheimer's and and jacqueline's challenges as well I, how how did you deal with that personally well i was always really inspired by martin's unwavering love for audrey and his continuing optimism I never got the sense that he was feeling sorry for himself or depressed. He was always had Audrey's care in mind and he was always there for her. For me, as a filmmaker, I was always trying to be as unobtrusive as possible. I was trying to fade into the background and I wanted to capture that intimacy and real life like you would with a cell phone or a home movie, you know, just to really be able to capture those intimate moments and have no barrier. Well, it really comes through as well, because it is so ordinary, and yet there's something extraordinary about it as well, you know? Yeah, what I was hoping to achieve through the use of music and animation so that the ordinary could kind of be raised into the extraordinary, like the ordinary little intimate moments through the right placement of music or animation, it would make it large and make it kind of epic in its own way. I, I want to talk about the animation too, but yeah. before before I, I go there and I sort to step in on you there like that, no uh, but you were also as a filmmaker really lucky because uh, Audrey Shermer, she herself was a photographer as well. So you've yeah. got all these images to, as a filmmaker to, to draw on. Not only was Martin a filmmaker for many years, but she too was a, a, was a very accomplished uh, photographer and photojournalist. Brilliant, yeah. That's one of the reasons I thought it was a natural idea to make a film about Martin is because He's been making films all his life, and he is in a lot of, or or some films throughout the history of uh, the NFB. And then there's also Audrey's photography, which is beautiful. And so we had that as a resource to sprinkle throughout the film, which just adds another layer for the visuals to play out. Well, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to Guerrilla Radio. I'm speaking today with Jeremiah Hayes. Jeremiah's got a film in the uh, end. It's going to feature in the upcoming Victoria Film Festival. That's running from the 4th of February through the 13th. His film is Dear Audrey. We're talking about it today. It's uh, I should mention that it's uh, already uh, an award-winning film at the Montreal International Documentary Festivals. Uh, it took the People's Choice Award, uh, always the most important prize, I, I, I contend. Uh, would you agree? I don't know. I, I'm sure that if I won a different prize, I would think that, that was the most important one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure that you have any, any award. It's, I'm really grateful that it, it turned out that way. I, I had no expectations. I didn't think it, we would win anything. But yeah, it's great that we did. You know. Well, I said in the introduction that the film is ethereal, and when I and when I was writing that, I was thinking mostly about, as you mentioned, the animation in it, and it's really extraordinary. I found anyway. Do you want to tell me a little bit about the animation and the and your and the team that created it? Well, I was extraordinarily lucky to have a team that would work so hard and also do it for uh, what we could afford in the budget. And um, Josh Rett led the team. They did an amazing job. I just couldn't be more happy with the animation. Oh yeah, and and the, yeah. and and the, that those scene, of course, and and it's on, on the website. And and I should I'm remiss in not mentioning if you go to dearaudrey.ca, you can. Uh, f there's lots of stuff about the film, of course, and 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 some features that you can look at. And 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 this particular scene too, uh, the animated scene from Mexico. Maybe you could describe uh, what it what it looks like and and. And uh, you mentioned how it was created, but I mean, just to give us a feel of what it actually looks like. Yeah, this is the story of Martin. He and his second wife moved down, drove from Montreal down to Mexico and decided to live there. And one night they're driving around a windy road and they, they hit a rock and crashed. And Martin literally went through the front window of this old VW van. Now, that's where the animation for the film takes over, and he starts flying in black and white line-drawn animation over the Mexican landscape. It turns out that Martin was in a coma for 10 days, and he almost died. 
And so, but throughout his telling this story, we just see him flying over the Mexican landscape. And while he was in a coma, he had this dream or this vision of the tree of life, which to this day, Martin tells me is a real influence and guiding force in his life. The idea that this tree is a unifying force in the universe and uh, we're all connected in some way. And so from there, while he's talking about the tree of life, we see galaxies <laughs> and this tree of life sprawling out into the universe. Yeah, and actually those galaxies in the tree of life were built from actual Hubble telescope imagery and, and animated. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> and he built that tree. It was just the most epic, gorgeous looking tree. Well, and the way he describes it too as being a tree that encompasses the universe, you know, that, yeah. that uh, yeah, it was just right. magnificent. And, and of course, the music, especially as you see Martin going through the windshield of this VW, uh, I, I still contend the most dangerous vehicles ever made, yeah. uh, and flying. Uh, but the yeah. music is just so haunting and beautiful. What, what about the music? Well, this was another great experience. I say the animators were an amazing team and worked great with, but the composer, Nick Grimshaw, just was like a partner in crime throughout the whole process. Just to let you know, usually in film, the composer comes on at the very end and has like a month to compose the whole film once the film is locked. But he and I worked together early on, which is the way I always wanted to do it, while you're editing and you're developing scenes, you throw things to the composer. He composes it and there's a back and forth. So there's it's much more organic that way. And he was really, really patient and hardworking and just did an amazing job. A really talented guy. And it, it was in the heart of the pandemic. We never met ex except for over Skype. He's in Ontario, I'm in Quebec. And it just worked out great. And if you go to the website, I drove to Burlington, Ontario, to shoot a little making of about him and his process. Yeah, that, that worked out really well. Well, it's, it's so. a beautiful film, beautifully shot. And the music and the animation, of course, is a, is a real highlight. And I'm, I'm, I'm certain that you'll get lots of questions about that. You're coming out to the Victoria Film Festival while it's showing. Do you plan to uh, give uh, any kind of talk or uh, Q&A or anything like that? Yeah, there will be a Q&A after. Uh, it's on the 8th at 2.45, and um, yeah. Yeah, I've got you here at Tuesday, February 8th, 2.45 at the Odeon 5. That's down on Yates Street, 780 Yates. Uh, I, they've got a letter D beside it. I don't know what that means, if that means that the director will be in attendance or something. I, I'm not really sure about that, but at 2.45, Tuesday, February 8th for Dear Audrey. Um, and thanks to Katja de Bock of the uh, National Film Board for helping set us up, as she's done so many times over the last few years. I wish you the best of luck, Jeremiah, uh, with your film. And again, go to dearaudrey.ca to find out more about it. And thanks for coming on today, eh? Oh, it's a real pleasure. And I want, uh, I want to also uh, thank Richard Sanders for coming on, remind you that all the opinions on this program belong to the participants, but you're welcome to uh, adopt them if you wish, but you, there's no necessity for you to do that. Thanks again for, for coming on, Jeremiah. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you.